Meanwhile, all month long for May, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, among others, but the importance of awareness is needed now more than ever before. That's right. Today we're joined by a man who is working every day mm. to help those needing help. Former NFL veteran and mental health advocate and founder of Dream the Impossible, Doug Middleton, is with us today. Welcome to Fox Souls Black Report, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Indeed. So, uh, Doug, can you share with us your mental health journey and tell us, you know, what led you to advocating um, following your time in the NFL? There's so many things you could have done. You know, why did you choose to, you know, spend your time, talent and treasure on this? Yeah, mental health is something uh, that's extremely important to me. Um, it's something that's impacted my life, uh, my family's life. And uh, it's just something that's, that I'm very passionate about. Uh, my brother, he's a social worker. My mom is a therapist. And for me, uh, throughout my, my journey and my career in the NFL, uh, having time uh, where I've had multiple season injuries and then also uh, losing my best friend to suicide in 2017, there was mm. just a lot of different things that happened throughout my career that's called me into this purpose. And uh, just also seeing you know teammates that I've played with throughout my career in the NFL that have died from suicide and uh, I have a platform you know, from playing in the NFL to be able to spread that healing to other people and, and, and other venues and avenues. And, you know, I'm just trying to step in that purpose. Indeed. And, and you got it honest when you, considering your mom and your brother's career. So tell us a little bit more about Dream the Impossible. And how did you uh, and your wife come up with this uh, idea for this uh, nonprofit? Yeah, for me um, and my wife, like, you know, me playing football with Appalachian State University and then following uh, my time there, played the NFL. And, I can just always remember people, you know, saying to me that um, everything that I want to accomplish in life, you know, was going to be impossible. And so I work with a lot of kids. I work with a lot of youth and, and our foundation works with a lot of youth. And, and we help them, you know, find out what their dreams are, what their purpose is in life. And then uh, we build them up the strength to understand that every, anything you want to accomplish in life is possible. And so uh, Dream the Impossible, we challenge these youth to really step out and, and not just dream in something that, that they know is attainable, but something that most people you know, wouldn't believe in or wouldn't think would be attainable. Uh, we help in the ways of mental health awareness, education, uh, connecting the resources and, and just breaking down the stigma. There is so much happening on the field. There's so much happening in our communities. Um, tell us, why do you believe mental health support is needed more now than ever in sports, particularly for black athletes? And, and what's something that you wish was available when you were playing? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really important, especially for black athletes in sports. I mean. I mean, you're seeing it now, um, you know, in John Moran's situation. I just heard you all talking about that just now. But, um, you know, once we make mistakes, it's, it's really hard to get back from that. And then, you know, a lot of people don't think about the mental, the mental uh, things that happen following uh, some of those losses and some of those losses that are put on such huge uh, platforms. Like when somebody else makes a mistake, you know, one person may know, another person may know. But when we as athletes make mistakes, it's put everywhere. And, and so as black athletes, you know, being tore down so easily, um, there's a lot of, um, I guess, mental lack that comes from that, that, that a lot of mental feedback that we have to, you know, bounce back from. And so just being able to, um, you know, notice that, know that, know what the what the signs are, know what the weaknesses of it is and know what the disadvantages of it is. And also in, in enjoying the strengths, too, like being able to play at this high level, being able to play at the NBA, NFL is, is something you dream of since you were a little kid. So. It is, it's, you know, you don't want to forget that, that it's still the dream, it's still everything that you that you've worked for. Uh, but one thing that I wish, um, you know, that that they had now that that, you know, I've always thought about is it's just being able to have a group of um, a group of mentors um, that can really guide these young men and, and, and really uh, that that are already kind of set up. So when these at risk situations do happen, we can just be plugged right in into these mentors, into this circle uh, to help us really bounce back. Yeah. Uh, real quick, Doug, you, you mentioned Job ja Moran. It's, it's, it's the talk of the, the town, if you will, uh, this, this morning. A little bit on, do you think, you know, from, from your seat, do you think this is more of a, a mental um, issue or is it, is it more so reckless abandonment? That seems to be the argument across social media uh, this, this, this afternoon. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, my thoughts. I mean, Josh's still very young. Um, he's, he's still, I think he's still under 25 years old. And, and 
when you look at the people he has around us and where he's from and and just being able you know i was always told just to make sure you have the right people around you mm -hmm. and uh, you know you show me your friends you can show you you know show them your destiny so it's just making sure that he gets the right people around him of course you know there's only so much an nba team with their you know their staff and the, you know that they can do to prevent some of the things that he's encountering right now um, there's only so much control that they do have and so it just really comes down to the people he hangs with the mentors that he looks up to and, and just getting the right people in the circle. In our remaining minutes with you, can you tell us for those wanting to get help or who may be in need of help, uh, where can they go? Yeah, yeah. If, if you know you're feeling alone, you're feeling like things aren't aren't where you want them to be in your life right now. You're feeling like, hey, like I don't know how I'm gonna be able to keep going. Uh, you know, one thing I would I would tell them is, is number one, reach out to the suicide hotline nine eight eight. Uh, that's been a resource that we've been long advocating for for a long time, and we finally. Or, you know, have access to that. So 988 just as easy as, as calling 911. And then the next thing I would say is is to, is to tell somebody in your group, you know, reach out and use your support system to be able to to have conversations and vulnerable conversations, not transparent but very vulnerable conversations where you find out, find ways that you can get better. And then from there, just finding a self-care routine, finding something that works for you, you know, finding, you know, whether that's yoga, which is something that I do, um, uh, whether that's you know going to a movie or just getting your nails done, finding your self care routine and what what you know you could do that could make you uh, be in a better place. Yoga, I love it. That's also yeah. a great practice. But my knees, <laughs> my, my yeah, knees, y'all yeah. listen to yoga, my knees. <laughs> yeah. Especially hot yoga. Hot, hot, yo oh, hot yoga. Would, hot I would fall great. out from hot yoga. Yeah, but y'all gotta y'all gotta come see me. We're um I'm opening a hot yoga studio in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Okay, uh, one of my old stomping right grounds. Now, we're, we'll we're have to we'll have to make our way for sure. Personally, how can we follow you? Keep in touch with you all across social media, especially with this effort with you and your wife. We want, definitely want to stay linked before we let you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can um, you can follow us on social media, uh, Dream the Impossible, or my Instagram, uh, 36DM underscore ERA. Um, and you can also follow, um, you know, check out our yoga studio, Wellness Center, Dream Yoga and Wellness. Um, you can find that on Instagram. But yeah, we're building a wellness center. Uh, currently, right now, we open up in two weeks, and it's a place that people will be able to come in and get in-person mental health therapy, and they'll also be able to do yoga. So we're just going to have everything um, you know, holistic health is what we're preaching. That's amazing. In person I in know. Charlotte. I don't know about hot yoga. Yeah. Easy. I need easy on the knees yoga. We got, we got, we got the hot yoga. We got non heated yoga. Any, any <laughs> road <laughs> trip. Easy That's all on I the got knees to say. yoga. That's what I need. We can do it. Doug Middleton, thank you so much uh, for your in, uh, ministry. You and your family. We appreciate you so much. You're, you're an official soulmate. We got to definitely have you back, brother. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Indeed. You. Indeed.